a radical equation is any equation that has a radical in it, so a square root, cube root, whatever. So I'm going to start us off on a pretty easy one. 2 plus the square root of 3x minus 2 equals 6. So the goal here is to get x by itself. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're solving for x. But to get x by itself, we would have to eliminate that radical. So we want to isolate the radical so we can, in this case, square it. Just remember, a square root and squaring would be considered inverse operations, right? That's what cancels each other out. So I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides of this equation. And now I have the square root of 3x minus 2 equals 4. So remember, here my goal was to isolate the radical. So now that it's isolated, we can eliminate it by squaring each side of the equation. So here we'd get 3x minus 2 equals 16. And now we're back to a pretty easy Algebra 1 equation. I'm just going to solve for x, so I'll add 2 to both sides. So I have 3x equals 18, and divide both sides by 3, and I have x now by itself, and it equals 6. Now, I want to move on to another example to show you that solving radical equations isn't exactly the same as solving other types of equations. And that's because of the domain of radical functions. So remember that the domain of f of x equals root x is 0 to infinity. Right, so when we're solving these radical equations, we're really just solving for real values, right? And we get those real values because the domain is 0 to infinity. So let's try another question here. So this was example 1. Here's example 2. Let's try the square root of x minus 3 plus 5 equals x. So again, I want to try to isolate this radical. So I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides. I have the square root of x minus 3 equals x minus 5. Okay, so now we've isolated that radical. I would like to eliminate it. So again, I'll square both sides, just like we did above. So here we have a square and a square root. Inverse operations are going to cancel. We get x minus 3. But be very careful over here. Very um, many mistakes have been made on this por portion of the problem right here. x minus 5 squared is really x squared minus 10x plus 25. Right? Don't forget that I, that answer should actually be a trinomial. So now we have a quadratic equation. So you need to think about the best way of solving this quadratic equation. First thing, let's make it equal to zero. So I'm going to move. I'm going to move the x and the three to the other side, to the right side. So I have zero equals x squared. Let's see, this is going to be minus 11x plus 28. And our options would be, let's see, for quadratics we can try to factor, we could graph, we could do quadratic formula. But if it's factorable, it's probably the easiest then. So let's see if this is factorable. Are there any numbers that multiply to 28 and add to negative 11? I believe so. I believe 7 and 4 will multiply to 28. And if we just made them negative, they would add up to negative 11. So this will factor into x minus 7 times x minus 4. And because of the zero product property, we can say, well, maybe x minus 7 is 0. In that case, x would be 7. Or maybe x minus 4 is 0. And in that case, x would be 4. And notice I'm not circling or squaring these answers right now. Okay, and that's because we have a problem. Watch this. If I go back to the original question, I'll just write it again over here. The square root of x minus 3 plus 5 equals x. Okay. So the square root of x minus 3, we know that that better be a positive value. And 5 
is already a positive value. So if we're adding those two things, we better get a positive value. Okay, so let's take a look at our answers here. X is 7 and X is 4. Okay, those are positive, that sounds good. But if you notice, if you said this, if you put a 4 in for that X right over there, you would have a positive number plus 5 equals 4. And you know that that's not possible, right? That cannot happen. And what happened in this problem is that we solved a different equation to get these answers. Notice that the original equation is a radical equation, and the equation that we actually solved was a quadratic. And quadratics have two solutions. And we had to do that. I mean, we had to solve it this way. But when we did that, we created an extraneous solution. That's what these are called. So let me just write that down. x equals 4 is an extraneous solution. Now here's the other thing. There can be more than one extraneous solution. So I'm actually just going to do a quick check and see if x equals 7 is a proper answer. So let me show you how to do a good check. So here we go, original problem. I'm going to substitute 7 in for x in both places. And a check you, makes you see if the left side and the right side are actually equivalent. So we don't want to move things from left to right. I'm actually just going to work the left side. Work meaning do the arithmetic. Okay, so 7 minus 3 is 4. So I have the square root of 4 plus 5. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So yes, this happened to work in the original equation. Whereas, and I'm just going to prove to you that 4 doesn't work, the square root of 4 minus 3 plus 5 equals 4. Let's work the left side here. The square root of 1 plus 5 is really 1 plus 5, which is 6. And obviously, those are not the same. right? So I'm going to cross out x equals 4. And I'm going to write extraneous solution next to it, as I've done. But I've checked x equals 7. And I know that that is a proper answer. So I've shown you an example where we had one solution, but we never checked it. So I just want to look back at the first example for a second. Let's just give it a quick check here. I'm just going to do it verbally. If I substitute 6 in for x, I have 3 times 6, which is 18. Minus 2 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So in that case, it was a correct solution, although we didn't know that it might be wrong. Let's do the square root of 2x plus 1 minus the fourth root of 3x plus 4. Let's make that equal to 0. When it's written in radical form, it's actually not so obvious as to how you are to deal with this, this difference. So I'm going to write this a little differently. What if I wrote 2x plus 1 to the 1 half? Right, that's the same thing as a square root. And then minus 3x plus 4, uh, that would be to the 1 fourth. So now it might be a little bit easier to see that we can actually eliminate the 1 half exponent and the 1 fourth exponent in one step. But before I eliminate them, I want to try to isolate each of them. It would be really nice if I could have a radical on each side of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to add the 3x plus 4 to the 1 fourth to the other side. So you need to think of this as, you know, trying to figure out what is the inverse of raising something to the 1 half power. That would be to raise it to the second power or squaring it. And what's the inverse of raising something to the 1 fourth power? That would be raising it to the fourth power. So if I raised it, if I raised this whole thing to the second power, it wouldn't be enough to eliminate the 1 fourth. But if I raised everything on the left and everything on the right to the fourth power, 
it would be enough to eliminate these rational exponents. So, let's see. Exponent rules say that when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, we are to multiply them. So in this case right here, we still have an exponent, but it's not a fraction anymore. That's good news for us. So I have 2x plus 1 squared equals, oh, this is good news, right? These are going to multiply to 1, so I just have 3x plus 4. And now I just have another quadratic equation, so I'm going to solve this. Let's see, I have to do 2x plus 1 squared. So if you need to write that out, expand it, please go ahead. So we get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 3x plus 4. And now I'm going to set this equation equal to 0, so I get 4x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. And you might want to try to factor it. I actually know that this is factorable. This factors into 4x and x, and let's see, 3 and 1, so I'm going to put a 3 and a 1 here, and we want to make it add up to positive 1, so I'll put the plus and minus this, so and that actually factored, but if you didn't realize that, of course you could use the quadratic formula. And from this, we're going to see that x equals 3 fourths, and on this one, x equals negative 1. Okay, so remember, we just took a radical equation and changed it into a quadratic. So we just opened the door to extraneous solutions. So let's just check out, okay, the 3 fourths. So if I did the square root of 2 times 3 fourths plus 1 minus the fourth root of 3 times 3 fourths plus 4, would that equal 0? Okay, so over here we have the square root, let's see, 2 times 3 fourths is really just 3 halves plus 1 minus the fourth root, this is really 9 fourths plus 4, we're still not sure if that equals 0. Okay, let's combine stuff in here, we have the square root, I'll treat the 1 as a 2 over 2, so I get 5 over 2. Over here I have the fourth root. I'm going to combine these. So I'll change that 4 to a 16 over 4. And I get 25 over 4. And now, let's see, is the square root of 5 halves and the fourth root of 25 over 4 really the same thing? So let's think of it this way. This is really... 5 over 2 to the 1 half, and this is really 25 over 4 to the 1 fourth, but we could write 25 as 5 squared, and we could write 2, oh sorry, 4 as 2 squared. So here we still have our 5 over 2 to the 1 half, and here I have 5 squared to the 1 fourth power, which we would just multiply these exponents to get 5 to the 1 half, and the same exact thing would happen with the 2 squared to the 1 fourth, so that's really just 2 to the 1 half power. And are these things the same? They are, so this one checks. And then if that checks, we know that that's a correct solution. We have one more to check, and we are done. So I'm going to try the square root of 2 times negative 1 plus 1 minus the square, oh, the fourth root of 3 times negative 1 plus 4. We'll see if that equals 0. And I notice right away that we have a problem. Right here we have the square root. Let's see, that's negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1. Right, so we're going to have a problem with this. Minus the fourth root, this is going to be the fourth root of 1. And we know right away that this is an imaginary number, right? We're not going to get to zero here unless this was an imaginary. So this is not working. We have an extraneous solution with x equals negative 1. So 3 fourths was our only answer. So those are my examples for today. And you can try some practice. <laughs>